Growing up, I spent hours sinking myself into virtual worlds where all the matters of real life were set aside and the only worries I had were between me and the controller in my hand. If you're anything like me, video games were a way to escape, pass time, and socialize with friends. And I was raised in a time where video games weren't seen as geeky or nerdy. They were just as normal as watching movies or playing a board game. People who don't play video games might not understand, but those who do know exactly what I'm saying without a doubt when I say that some games gave an experience like no other and they were able to leave a mark on me that shaped who I am and how I interact with the world around me. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the video games that shaped my childhood. But first, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this video. That's right, we actually got a sponsor here, you guys, and luckily it's something that I actually use and see as a necessity. You've probably heard of a VPN before, but if not, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, which basically means that it gives you privacy online. It ensures that your location stays private, your data is encrypted, allowing you to surf the web completely anonymous. There are so many different VPNs out there and it could probably be really difficult to choose the best one for you because there's so many different factors that go into what you need. Luckily, there's Surfshark, which offers a lot of great features. The biggest benefit to using a VPN that I enjoy is being able to stream movies and TV shows on Netflix and Disney Plus that aren't available in your country. They also have a hack lock feature that gives you real-time alerts when your email or passwords are at risk. And my personal favorite is the clean web feature that allows you to be online without any ads, trackers, malware, or phishing attempts. Surfshark is easy to use and available on all platforms with unlimited devices. You can just go into the app, hit the button, and bam, you're connected to one of their thousand super fast servers and your activity online isn't tracked anymore. If you use my code ONLYJS, you can get 83% off plus an extra month free. So go ahead and use my code ONLYJS or click the link down in the description. So if you're in the market for a VPN, be sure to check out Surfshark. I remember watching my dad play the first Grand Theft Auto on the original PlayStation. It's not a game that I remember much of because I didn't play it on my own, but it definitely was a gateway into a lifetime of gaming. I think my first video game that I played that stands out in my mind was, and you'll never guess it, it was The Lion King, Simba's Mighty Adventure. It was a 3D adventure platformer game that took you to the story of Disney's Lion King movie. Truly captivated my four-year-old mind. This thing was tough though, I know for sure that I never beat the last level. Things took a very sharp turn though when I got my first first Xbox. I went from playing Simba in the grasslands of Africa to murdering grandmas on the streets of LA with true crime, Streets of LA. You played a detective that was recruited into an autonomous elite operative division of the LAPD, trying to solve the mystery of your father who went missing 20 years ago, and who cares? I honestly don't remember much of this game. I actually had to read the plot off of Wikipedia. I just know that it was an off-brand GTA that was super fun. You could be a good cop or a bad cop, shoot criminals and steal civilians' cars. This was way way too violent of a game for me to be playing and I think my dad figured that out after like a week or two and he made me stop playing it but damn was this thing fun. I really enjoyed true crime and was sad when he stopped letting me play it so he bought me the next best thing. No 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 not GTA. Pfft, fuck that shit. No not that. I'm talking about the Simpsons hit and run. Oh my god if you played this game you know exactly what I'm talking about and how fun it was. You got to play as the freaking Simpsons characters, you guys. Okay, this thing was a huge sandbox style open world where you couldn't die, filled with everything you loved about Springfield, like the Simpsons house to the Quickie Mart to the nuclear plant. You could play as Bart and drive cool cars, just overall A plus of a game, 10 out of 10, would recommend, definitely would play again. I'm just kidding about not liking GTA, it was just for the purpose of saying like how much I like the Simpsons. GTA is a really good game, please don't hate on me. I also grew up in an era where skateboarding games reigned supreme. If you ask any normal person about them, they might talk about about Tony Hawk's Underground or Pro Skater 3, but if you ask me what the best game was, the clear winner was Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. We really, really were just obsessed with Tony Hawk back then, apparently. This game was outrageous and it really filled my wannabe punk skater heart that I had when I was like six. And the soundtrack was awesome and the game was super easy, which doesn't sound like a good thing, but you have to remember, I was six. I needed my hand to be held in order to finish a game, apparently. I do remember my Xbox overheating one summer and completely just breaking the game, so I had to beg my dad to buy me a new one because I loved it so much and when he did my Xbox just broke it again so it has a special place in my heart just for that. I spent a lot of my childhood watching my older brothers and cousins play video games and I had to go get them food or rub their feet in order to get 15 minutes of playing time. One specific game that sticks out in my mind for this was Harvest
Christmas Moon Magical Melody on the GameCube. And I can hear everyone who doesn't know what this is cringe because it's such a girly title. And you know what? It is a very girly game, but I love it and they loved it and actually ended up replaying it a couple years ago and it's still like really good. But basically, it's this really addicting simulation farming game where you grow crops, buy animals, get married, and the whole point of the game is to unlock enough magical notes to wake up a harvest goddess from her sleep. It sounds just as dumb as it actually is, but I promise it's one of my favorite games of all time and my cousins were all addicted to it. Speaking of games that I played with my cousins, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Everyone knows about this game. It's iconic simply for the sake of having every video game character you could ever dream of. This was the game that everybody in the family could get behind. I, of course, was complete garbage at it. We had this system that if you lost, you had to switch for the person who was waiting, and I always lost because I never knew the moves and ended up button smashing. I'm a lot better at it now and will kick some ass on the Switch, but back in the GameCube days of 2008, I was the one having to sit out and watch because I kept losing. Humbled me a bit. Thrillville! Oh my god, I freaking love this game. Okay, one, because it was basically Roller Coaster Tycoon in the sense that you can manage a theme park, and two, because it gave you the extra added bonus of allowing you to walk around in the park like a person, and you could interact with other people and make them just super uncomfortable, which was awesome. I think I had this on the Wii, but I remember spending like all summer one year just unlocking all five parks and making the craziest roller coasters that I could. I think from Thrillville and Harvest Moon, I discovered that I really like simulation games and interacting with NPCs, which led me right to The Sims games. I played The Sims on the Game Boy, the DS, the Xbox 360, and on PC. I even gave The Sims Mobile a try before getting smothered with in-game purchases. But oh my god, these games were so good, from the character and house creations to discovering vampires and aliens to trying to drown the Grim Reaper in a pool. I definitely lost just hours of my life playing somebody else's life in these games. I think the one game that I I spent the most time on was Call of Duty Black Ops 2. As basic as it sounds, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. I truly miss the Xbox 360 days where everybody's in the lobby, we all had microphones and we we're just talking shit to each other. I made some really good internet friends in these days and the game was good, yeah, but it was just the sense of community that really made these games what they are and I don't think they've been able to capture that same vibe since. The campaign was deep and well thought out compared to today's titles, zombies was insane, and I think nothing will ever beat the multiplayer times I had. Spending weeks trying to get all the snipers to gold so I can get diamond and watching hours of Vanos gaming just to see what people who are actually good at the game were doing, Black Ops 2 is a favorite of many. I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone on this one and say that Skyrim and Fallout got me into the world of modding. I always knew that cheat codes existed, but the idea of being able to add cheats, items, and just mess with the game in any way you want was completely new to me and once I got into it, I was addicted. I instantly got the mod that turned dragons into Thomas the Train Engine and I beat Fallout 4 once in an Iron Man suit with a lightsaber. This opened my eyes to the true potential of games and how you can literally do anything that you want with enough time and imagination and some coding skills, but these games overall changed the world and not just mine. Remember how I talked about watching my cousins and brothers play video games? Well, one game that I got into in my later teens because I watched them play it when I was younger was StarCraft II. This game took advantage of how competitive I can get. Strategy games aren't for everybody, but this game is just something else. Its pace depends on you, and with each tier you break, the gameplay just completely changes and you can't stick to the same thing that you're doing no matter how hard you try. I still play StarCraft to this day, and I freaking love it so much. It's actually one of the games that I plan on streaming once I move to LA, so stay tuned to that. But if you haven't played this game, you should. I recommend it because it's a classic, it's still being updated, and it has a thriving community even 10 years after its release. Red Dead Redemption was a game I grew up watching my dad play, so when Red Dead 2 came out, I instantly went out and bought a PS4 just to play it. It is one of the best experiences I've ever had while playing a video game. It's beautiful, it's fun, and after chapter 3, it just changes up what you think the game's gonna be about. The story is great, and you're really able to just fall in love with the characters. If I'm not mistaken, I think they just put this on PC a while ago, so I might have to buy it and replay it. I truly love this game just so much, and it's something I will always pick up if I have the chance. Here's a game that I don't think anybody here will have ever heard of, but it's a game that I talk about all the time and is one of my favorites right now. It's called Breath Edge, and it's the same idea behind Subnautica, but you're a Russian astronaut that got stuck in the middle of space rather than the middle of the ocean. It's very eerie at times, but also kind of comforting, and when I first played it, it was just in the beta version, so you only had the first chapter, which meant that when you were supposed to beat the game and go to the next chapter, it just threw this huge twist, left you stranded, and actually made my jaw drop in shock. I love this game, I really, really, really love this game. 
As cheesy as it sounds, video games mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. They allow us to be more than who we are, experience wild stories, be with friends from across the world, and just take a break from the world around us. These are just some of the games that mean the most to me. With the COVID-19 quarantine, I plan on playing a lot more games just because I have a lot more time now. So I would love to know some of the games that shaped you and your childhood. So let me know that in the comments. Also, let me know if you played any games that I talked about and what you think of them. Drop a like, share with a friend. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.